Well, hello everybody and good afternoon. It is May 23rd, 2022. And we're glad you're all here uh, for a live Q&A. So if you have any questions or anything, this is your chance to ask them. I do this once a week or so. Next week will be someone else from the Dice Tower. Uh, but if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the chat and I'll try to answer as many as I can, if I feel like it, of course. So let's see, I don't see any questions right now. There is a contest. Well, yeah, I guess I should actually pull up the contest so I can do that while I'm waiting for some questions to get started here. So we have a contest for Game Nerds. Game Nerds is a fantastic online game store. I was just thinking about them because I later on this week I'm doing my top uh, best-selling games from April 2022 from Game Nerds. So today is the 23rd. So we have a contest for a $10 Game Nerds gift certificate. And all you have to do is email us at contest at dicetower.com. And in the subject line, put the word Taffy, T-A-F-F-Y. And answer the question, is Taffy a menace, yes or no? Like some people like Taffy and some people do not. All right. So now we got the contest going. Let's get back to any questions that we have there. Let's see. What's the best thing I ate this weekend? Um, actually, that's not the first question, but I'll answer it. I don't know what the best thing I ate this weekend was. Pizza. I had some good pizza. Um... Top 10 Legacy games the other day. Did you guys complete Jurassic World Legacy? How did it stack up compared to the other Legacy games? Well, I can't answer that question because I have not played Jurassic Legacy other than the um, uh, the, pre the, 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 the prelude, which you saw me play here live. But they are playing Jurassic World Legacy, and you know what? No, no kidding, no joke aside, they're literally playing it and finishing it, like finishing, finishing it right now as we speak, but I'm not part of that game, so you have to wait. I believe you will see that review, though, in a while before it comes out. Uh, let's see here. Is there currently any Dice Masters in the Dice Tower Library? There is. How's the digital Gloomhaven playthrough going? Well, actually, it's going fine, although it's been a while. Mr. Bonnegor is one of the people playing, and he tends to uh, travel all over the world all the time. Uh, me and Rod, though, the other two players, we're thinking about starting our own side gig going where we're going to play through Jaws of the Lion, which they just released. Tom, without being too dramatic, games really do help people. I grew up playing every sport possible now. As I'm getting older, I can't play sports as much as I used to. I've started getting into a funk. Okay. I don't... Did I not say that games don't help people? I, I think they do. No, I don't know. Maybe this is a response to something. Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's the rest of it. Playing board is filled a void, which is my life. I come to find out social void, including camaraderie. Does it impact you at all? Well, I mean, it does give me a job. But before it gave me a job, um, it was a hobby of mine. I liked it. It brings people together. There's so many good things I could say about board gaming. Do I watch any K-dramas? Not currently. Thoughts and predicted winners for the Spiel des Jahres. Uh, I think I'm going to hold off on the, my predicted winners until the news when we talk about it on Thursday. What was the most surprised A-Team Top 100? I don't know. Actually, I have not gone through them all with a fine-tooth comb, but we will. Chris has put together a whole lot of data on crossovers and more information from the top 100 and we'll be going over that next week. We'll do probably a live video where we talk about our top 100s and stuff. Oh, I just got a thumbs down. What did I say? I'm so sorry. Are you excited for the Obi-Wan series? Not particularly. I, 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 I always, to me, whenever a series is not set in the future, I'm less excited about it. Because, for example, we know Obi-Wan won't die. How do we know this? Because he dies in episode four of Star Wars. Big spoiler if you haven't seen that movie, which is now 40-some years old. Um, but 
so that also Obi Wan and Darth Vader acted like that was the first time that they met since I don't know. I, I mean, I'm sure it's got some awesome scenes. I'll watch it. My kids will enjoy it and stuff. I just tend to like stuff that has things we don't know about yet. Show me some like that's why I like the Mandalorian because it's set post Star Wars. I guess granted it's set before. Episode 7, 8, and 9, but nah, it has a bunch of characters I don't know anything about. I don't know what will happen to them. We'll be doing a review of Demio. I know it's a VR board game, but this had a PC release, and I don't know anything about any of this. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a PC, so probably not. Since you'll be a grandpa by the end of the week, are you feeling any familiar pangs from when you first became a father? Nope. Not at all, actually. I mean, it's interesting. I'm excited about it. Um, but, and, 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 don't get me wrong, but man, no, this doesn't change anything about my life other than my wife has left me. Let's <laughs> go see the baby. Man, I've never seen someone so excited to leave this morning. Anyway, um... Yeah, but I no, because my life is not going to change dramatically. When you become a real father, um, sorry, real father, like, as opposed to a fake father. When you become a father as opposed to a grandfather, your life changes dramatically. So, no, it's not the same. And even if it was the same, it was, this is, this is the 10th time I've been through this, so. When's the next non-gaming top 10? That's a good idea. We haven't done one of those in a while. We should. Have you ever seen Postmodern Jukebox play live? I heard you mention them in the Q&A and I love them. Yeah, I really like them. And I know I've never seen them live. They were here in Miami or, or Lauderdale at some point, And it was the same time, I think, as Dice Tower West or something. I was really annoyed because I would have gone to see them. I really like seeing that sort of thing. Any chance of a remake of Duel of Ages 2? They're actually making Duel of Ages 3 right now. I think you can go look on Board Game Geek to see, talk about it. I haven't seen anything on it for a while. What term would you like to see stick that is synonymous with Ameritrash? It doesn't have a negative connotation thematic. You know what? At the end of the day, who cares? I think we sometimes give words too much meaning. We um, we tried to get people to say Ameritrash for a while because we thought it was a cooler name than Ameritrash. But you know what? Whatever. Let people call things what they want. It's not that big of a deal. Sometimes I try to change terminology for whatever reason. Or we I use a specific terminology. Like I stopped using the word gateway games very often because gateway is sort of a, like uh, how to get into the hobby and then play some better games. And I thought Z used the word welcoming games, and I thought that was a better term. So I used it that way. But you know what? If someone says gateway, I'm not going to reach over there and start yelling them for using the wrong term. I just don't think, it just seems like a fight not worth fighting. Do you know of any table hacks or pro tips for a cheap board game table option? Well, I would look at uh, table toppers. Um, Oh, no, game toppers. I don't know why I always say table toppers. Game toppers. That's a cheap way to do it. Ever thought about adding someone looking at RPGs to the channel? No, not really. Uh, because I don't think our channel needs to become so broad. RPGs are its own thing. And I found that the crossover between board gamers and role players is not particularly that big. Yes, there's some crossover, but it's not that big of a crossover. What sort of setting would you like for your next open world video game? Uh, well, I guess space, but isn't isn't that isn't the new one coming out this year or next year from um, uh, the, the the Skyrim people? Beth Bethesda, aren't, isn't there? Star, whatever it's called, coming out. Uh, will I play the new Zelda when it comes out next year? Probably. Is 
Is Hanging Gardens in the Dice Tower Library? I don't know, actually. I don't have the list here in front of me to look it up. Did you ever finish your turtle? Oh, yeah, I, I lost. I, I don't know what I was doing, though. I didn't read the rules. <laughs> um, what's your ratio between gaming and non-board gaming activities on the cruise? For me... 50% maybe? I do a lot of stuff that's not gaming. I mean, for me, it's not really a fair thing, though. I also go around and check on other people playing games. But I do a lot of stuff. I go see uh, um, as many shows as I possibly can. I spend a decent amount of time eating and uh, sometimes hanging out, listening to music and stuff. Will the Dice Tower be at Origins? We will not. Sorry. Have you ever seen a rocket launch in person? I have not. Sorry. I, is ice cream as good year round, or is there a specific ice cream season? Nope, ice cream is good all year round. Where did I get this hat? I believe someone gave me this hat on the cruise. Yes, this is a Indiana Jones headwear. This was given to me on the last cruise. Thank you. If you want to make me your friend for life, give me a hat. No, I'm not asking for hats. I don't want to. As a world-renowned award, do you ever wish Spiel des Jahres would open up their criteria to non-German printed games so that games that win are current rather than four years old? No, because it is a German award. I don't know why. Yeah, it's world-renowned, but it's a German award. They're allowed to do that, just like the Dice Tower Awards. We're, we're kind of U.S.-centric in, in many ways. I mean, we've, we're English-centric, so we, have, we talk about when the games came out in English, even if it came out earlier. I, I don't think, like, trying to petition that, it's called the Spiel des Jahres. The video that they posted about this morning was all in German. It's made specifically for the German people. No, I don't think they should change it at all. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Guys, I, 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 just as a heads up, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to answer about what theme would I like to see in a game or what new theme do I think is not used enough, mostly because that's asked every single week and I'm, it just gets kind of tiresome to answer it all the time. Sorry. Um, I'm turning 40 soon. Any advice on how to deal with getting old? First of all, if you think 40 is old, it's not. I, I like to joke that I'm old now. I'm 45, going to be 46 in a few months, but I'm not old. Um, I don't, I don't know when old is. I mean, definitely you feel things you didn't feel before. Getting up off the couch is maybe not so easy and stuff like that, but whatever. What style of game has a chance to take over the number one spot on Board Game Geek? Any style of game. But probably a heavier game. Because a heavier game will have fewer people play it who don't like it. So they will therefore not rate it lowly. So it has to have a group of fans who love it. And people who might hate it won't play it. That's why Gloomhaven, Twilight, Struggle. That's why the heavier games do better. Because a lot of people who might rate them lowly never play them. I don't know anything about the Xbox Tainted Grail. Also, I don't have an Xbox, so I wouldn't know anyway. Do I have a go-to high player count game for most ages? I don't know what that means. So, no. I don't have a go-to thing anyway. I just like, hey, this game, hey, I'm interested in playing this game, and we play it. Could you review Talisman 4th Edition? Oh, yeah, sure. It sucks. Um, I know you didn't think highly of it, but you'd be hilarious. Oh, well, I just reviewed it for you. I say this as an Vid Talisman 4th Edition fan and completion. It's just to clarify, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that funny. I, I, I really, I tried. I played, uh, I, me and my, I taught my kids the Star Wars Talisman, and they were like, what is this? Where are the choices? It's all random. My kids were very annoyed by the whole thing. I was like, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> that's what Talisman is. Um, I went to Ikea for my table, looked for a conference table, found a nice one's modular, bought four of them. And now I can configure them any way I need to based on the game played. Well, that's interesting. Um, four of them. What kind of tables are they? Send me a link if you could. Send it to uh, tom at dicetower.com. Are you looking forward to the new Jurassic Park movie? Yes! I am interested in it, but uh, I don't know. We'll wait and see. 
I've not played the Siege expansion for War Chest. Sorry, just never got a copy of it. Been watching for years. I've always wondered how you decide which knickknacks and collectibles to put on the shelf behind you. You know, I just kind of pick them, but uh, for the last few weeks, the ones that I, I, I asked my daughter, Holly, I said, hey, you have an eye for just pick stuff. Pick stuff that's like spring, summer, so that's what's behind me. Do the manatees next to the YouTube counter have names? No, but let's name them. We got Blubby and Flugo. Is there a significance of the diecast card behind you? No, I saw it and I bought it. It was cool. I got that at Universal Studios. Are you excited for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game, Shredder's Revenge? You know, I think sometimes you should, when you ask these questions, you should say things like, what do you think about something, not are you excited for? Because very few things that I hear about coming get me excited because I'm getting more patient, I suppose, as I get older. And I'm like, that sounds interesting. I hope it's good. Some things get me excited, but very, very few things. Are your boring unboxings boring for you? I get excited when I open a package when I when I know what's inside because it's rare. No, no, no. I, I, they're not boring for me. I like opening boxes and finding the cool games, and I really like doing that. Hi, Tom. If you don't get sent a game by a publisher for a review, do you ever buy it yourself? Oh, yes. We bought many, many of the games we do. You know, um, if I said every game we got was one that was sent to us, it's not even close to true. You should always assume that we got a copy, if that, in case for some reason you think that affects us, because I promise you it does not. Um, there have been games we bought that we've trashed. There have been games we got sent that we've trashed, and vice versa. Um, but, yeah, we get sent a lot of games, for sure, a ton, but we have got a, quite a few games ourselves. That being said, if we don't get sent a game, I don't feel like I have to buy it. So, I will only buy it if I'm really interested in it or something. So, you're like, well, you've never played that game. Well, I wasn't particularly interested in the first place, and the company never sent it. Um... How would you react if someone licked their fingers to pick up a game, a card from the table? I would say, I might say something, I guess. I don't know. I wouldn't get that upset, but I don't think you should do it. I've not been watching your marble races. Is there one or a few marbles that have consistently good winning records? You gotta watch the marble races to find out that question. Let's see here. Do you feel a bit warmed up with the at the table format? Uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Anything that's new takes a while to get into. We got another at the table coming next week. I'm um, working on Eric with that. I think at the table next week, though, is going to be on a Tuesday, since next week on Monday is Memorial Day here in America. Will the library have a static number of shelves for the sake of space, or would you ever add more? There's a chance we'll add more. I mean, we just added two more today, but they're kids' games for Dice Tower East. So we have, I now know how many shelves of kids' games we have, which is two. I mean, technically, kids can play games all over the library. So, I mean, there's going to be games that work for kids, like, for example, Ice Cool. Yeah, kids love playing that game, but I have it in my library now. But I have some very specific games for kids in the library. Have you personally tried Arc Nova Soa? No, because I don't particularly like big, heavy Euro games solo. I'm just not that. I'd, I'd rather play them with other people. Are you excited for the Cast of the Burgundy Game Found project? Well, we're going to actually talk about that this week on Crowd Surfing. Any thoughts on the Mutant Genesis expansion as for Marvel Champions? Hey, X-Men are here finally. Let's hope they show up in other games. I want an X-Men um, Descent game. Favorite Tarantino movie? I, I don't really know them off the top of my head. Kill Bill Volume 1? Uh, let's see here. 
Any new segments planned? Always, I'm thinking of new stuff to do here for the Dice Tower. You'll just have to wait and see on it, though. Have you ever tried to design a game by yourself? Yes, it's very, very, very well known. Vicious Fishes, look it up. It is one of the top renowned games. If we did a top 10 games designed by Dice Tower staff, it is in the top three, for sure. Now I'm thinking of the scene. Did no one else design the game, right? <laughs> number one. It's not number one. Number one. Um, I love the class review segment. How much does the test of time cause you to rethink, value more, or go back to a game? That sounds like a statement more than a thing because, I mean, what, what, uh, it affects me 37%. No, I like looking at classic things. And I think, I think in board game, I think we have several problems right now with the board game online hobby, well, content creation and such, is that the biggest problem is that there's a cult of the future going on. Everyone only talks about stuff coming out. When I get a new Kickstarter game and I play it and I mess with it, I'm like, oh, I wonder what other people think of it. There's almost no reviews. All the previews were done two years ago. And those people have moved on. And if you go online, very few people talk about games that are out now, let alone in the past. And I, and I mean, from the Dice Tower, we're going to get caught up in that, too. We got Mark Street doing previews and Stella doing previews. And we do Crowdsurf when we talk about upcoming stuff. And then we also talk about hot new games coming out. But I want to take a look at older games occasionally, too, because I think that's important. That's one of the reasons we do our top ten lists, because we like to bring up older games and games that exist out there. And this constant rush in consumerism, where every review is very positive and says buy, is not helpful to the consumer. Yeah, you make all the companies happy. They're thrilled that you're saying, buy everything. Buy the biggest pledge. Get it. And in reality, you shouldn't be doing that. You don't have the money for that unless you're one of those people who has a humongous disposable income. So to you, the consumer, we would be remiss if all we did would say, you know what you should buy? The greatest thing ever! It's not out yet, but it's on Kickstarter right now. Are you kidding me? Are you saying the other 10,000 games out aren't fantastic and good? Because some of them are. So I think we got to kind of curb that and put the brakes on, which is why we take a look at these classic games. Now, sometimes the classic games are garbage, right? And that, that's definitely going to be the case. But sometimes they're not. And I think they're worth taking a look at these older games. And sometimes you get these games for an inexpensive price. So I think this headlong rush into consumerism, and I'm not going to be like anti-consumerism, I think... Buying new games is good, helps grow the hobby, you know, and it's good and it's fun to get new games. I'm not going to say anything negative about that, but that seems like that's all anyone cares about anymore. And then, and then when the, the negative things show up and we find out that shipping is expensive and that these games are taking up too much space in your house and your spouse starts complaining that they're taking up too much space and all these problems happen and you have the quote-unquote shelf of shame where you have shelves of games that you haven't played yet. Stop buying games! And let's take a look at games that already exist. It's pretty easy. To, uh, I, I've seen several videos lately about um, people stopping buying games and slowing down. I think that's not necessarily not a bad thing. And it's pretty easy for most people in major metropolitan areas because you're going to hang out with someone who does have a ton of games. So let them be the one to buy the games. All right, done ranting. Moving on. When was the last time you paid by check? I just did two week, or three weeks ago when we were getting a new shed here so that we can move the stuff from our garage to the shed so that we can refurbish the garage, make it a studio. So, which, the permit's been approved, hooray! Um, I just found that out two days ago. But, uh, I had to pay them by check. I was like, ah, check! It was, it was the first time in probably six months I had used a check. Just to clarify, I still haven't got X-Men United yet, all right? So people keep asking me, like, when are you going to talk about it? When I get it. I don't think it's even shipped yet. I don't even think it's landed yet. Uh, 
At the table with Ben. Interesting on how people don't notice who are the designer, artist, etc. of the game at the convention. Is it possible to include their photo when you talk about the game? Not really. First of all, that's a ton of work. Secondly, half these people don't have pictures on the internet. Thirdly, go back to point one about that being a ton of work. Fourthly, most people don't care. And I don't even know that I would care. We say designers should be famous and all that. But in reality, it's just not going to happen. Um, you know, uh, so... And, and while we, deep in the hobby, we care who designs the game, most people don't. It's a fun game. Hey, this game has the same design as that game. Eh, I don't know. Is it fun? That's all people care about. And that's okay, I think. Did you ever get an amateur ham radio? No. My dad had a huge radio he got when we were kids. I thought it was pretty cool. We listened to stations from all over the world, the broadband, and there was some ham radio on it. And I thought it was slightly interesting, but that was about it. Um, uh, but yeah, I didn't do anything else with it. What about cats that you dislike? Well, I mean, I think we can all agree. Like, I don't know that anyone likes it, do they? I think it's, like, widely agreed that it's one of the worst musicals ever put to screen. I still don't even know what the plot was. I mean, the music's fine, but it was creepy and weird. There was cockroaches walking around. Um, I, I I never saw the original Cats on Broadway, but this one, I mean, the one on TV, the, one, the movie one was particularly not very good. Have you ever dabbled in the cubing, Rubik, twisty puzzles and such? Is that what it's called, cubing? Uh, yeah, I like puzzles, but I, I'm, I'm very bad at, at that particular brand of puzzle. Do you think Kickstarter is on the decline? Says Jeff. I've lost, been losing interest lately because there's just too much content and the games aren't that good to me. I sold most of the ones I backed. Well, I honestly would only... I would read a lot about games and I would... I think the best Kickstarters I back is like a second edition or a second printing of a game that you know is already good or wait till they come out in stores. I don't think Kickstarter is on a decline. I think we're seeing a small dip in it because of the shipping thing, and people are buying too many games, probably. So maybe, but I don't think it's on a decline. Today is Victoria Day for Canadians. Is it Victoria Day for like British people too? I don't know. Is there a memorable interaction you've had with a designer that was pleasant despite having given a negative review? Yes. And honestly, I, I don't know off the top of my head of who, but I, I will say it's happened 50 plus times. Uh, designers are very, well, not always. Sometimes it's very, you know, it's a little weird. But most designers have been very, very gracious to me, even when I've said some very negative things about their games. Now, usually they've designed multiple games, and so some of their games I end up liking. So that's easier in that case. But I've had many, many good reactions, and I'd say the vast majority of reactions in the industry is good. In the Uno Ultimate Review, Violet insulted Jimmy's intelligence. Is she normally that mean? Yes. Um, there's a list of good games. Can you please do a list of good games that are good for two players but also play well with more? As a couple of board games, we find it hard to play games we can play just with us, but also work for two. I feel pretty sure we've done a list of multiplayer games that are good with two, which is the same thing. Let me see. Multiplayer games good for two dice tower. Um, yeah. Top ten multiplayer games that are best with two. That's close, I guess. Um, that's not exactly what you're looking for, and also that's a long time since we've done that one. Eh, maybe we'll redo that list in the future. Mm, I like that. I will consider that. And somehow I lost the questions. Oh, there they are. Let's see here. 
What's the best DC Comics game? I definitely have done a top 10 DC games list. There might be a new game or two on the list, but it probably still holds pretty true. Not as good as the Marvel list, unfortunately. Vicious Fish's rank overall, 16,675. Ooh, but let's see what it's better than. All right, this will be fun. All right, Vicious. Can't even spell Vicious right. Vicious. Vicious. Oh, board Game Geek. All righty. Has 50 rankings on it. You're right. It's ranked 16,675. But you know what it's better than? Well, hang on. i got to figure out. Where is it? It's better than Game of Dracula, but it's not as good as Joan of Arc's Victory 1429 AD. But you know what it's better than? The Moscow Option Guterian's Gambit. But it's not as good as a game called Rolling Dice. It's not as good as Sword and Sails. All right. But what, let's, let's see what it's better than. It's better than a game called Sugar Blast, and it's better than a game called The Deck of Dice. These are games that I've ranked. Um, it's ranked higher than um, Gem Dealer. <laughs> and it's ranked higher than Drake and Drake. And Deadpool versus the World. Yes! This is Fishes. Better than Deadpool versus the World. That's going on the box. It's also better than Oh My Gold, which is a terrible name, and Geominos. And it's better than Sing It, Horse Fair, the card game, Rebound. It's not better than Rebound. Rebound's a fun game. Gumball Rally. It's better than Grandmaster and Rule the Roost. Hmm. Y'all don't know what you're talking about. You're missing one of the best games of all time. All right. Um. One of my favorite segments are live plays where the audience can play along, roll and write, and similar games. Any plan for segments like that? We might do that. There's a ton of uh, online uh, people who do that sort of thing. So I try not. I try to do our own thing on the Dice Tower. I mean, I'm not going to say if someone has a good idea, we're not going to copy it. But we try to think of things that are interesting that not everyone else is doing. And the roll and writes where people can play along is done by a lot of people. Do you think board games can make an interesting theme for a movie? No. But, I mean, I, I say that despite the cinematic classic Battleship. So, I might not know what I'm talking about. If you heard anything about El Grande getting a reprint, just learned it, and I want to get a copy. I don't know. That'd be cool if it was. What rough ratio would you say your gameplays are for games less than one year versus games greater than one year? I need you to explain that more. I don't know what that means. Greater than one. Oh, oh. I, I still don't understand that question. Do you put ketchup on hot dogs? No, that's an abomination. I would have considered making the shed the studio, but I guess there are good reasons for that. Okay, so that actually is something I uh, um, I considered, but I think one of the main reasons is um, that I, I, I decided not to because going to the shed and going here, it, it would be a much farther thing. While in here... If we need to move like a camera from one studio to the other studio, it'd be much easier. Just boom, boom. It's just a much faster spot to get games and everything to go in there. And for air conditioning purposes, I think it would be better. That's just my, my thoughts on there. Do you hand out business cards? I don't. Um, now, if I'm going to Essen, I usually take some business cards because I occasionally I meet, I, I, I notice that and I don't know if this is the case still because time changes pretty quickly, but when the last several years in, in, in Essen and, and when I was in China, exchanging business cards is a really big deal. I've had a few people give me business cards, and I've handed out a few of them at conventions. I, carry, I have some made for that purpose, but I don't normally do that. I will say that when someone gives me a business card now, I take a picture of it, and then I throw the business card away when they're not looking maybe, um, unless it's a really cool card, or I just take a picture of it and give it back to them. Um, because uh, that's what I'll remember.
Peachire says, hello, what's the last game you played that had a shark in it? Um, uh, I don't know if such a thing is possible. Shark week is coming. Does anyone care? Alrighty. Let me see here. I've not played several people have to play games. No, no, no. If I play a game, I do a review on it usually or mention it. For events you're not able to attend, like the UK Games Expo next week, do you reach out to other reviewers for their impressions, or do you just focus on events where you have first-hand experience? Oh, I ask people what it was like. I ask people how things went at the different conventions. Sure. Let's see here. I'm looking for questions here. I enjoy hearing you interact with other board gamers on their podcasts. Is there a way we can get people from other channels onto your channel to play games with you guys? Well, I mean, that might happen. Remember, for us to bring anybody in to the Dice Tower, it's, it's an expensive proposition. You would have to fly them in, put them up. And that's minimum, right? That's the, the minimum thing to do. We've done that a few times, but we found that just very expensive for us. We also have a very, in my opinion, and you can disagree on this, I guess, we have a very, very deep staff here at Dice Tower and Dice Tower contributors, right? And so I love our team. So I'm going to always give our team front billing at this point in time. Sure, we'll do crossovers with people occasionally, but I like having the people here. I think they do a fantastic job. Can we get a Vicious Vicious playthrough maybe as a stretch goal for next year? I don't know that we have Vicious Vicious. <laughs> I think Z actually got rid of his copy, and it's in our games for taking the Dice Tower East. I tried VR one time um, at PAX East, and it was pretty cool, but that's about it. I, I like the idea of VR. I haven't found it as exciting as other people, so... Who knows? What's the worst time of the year to launch a Kickstarter? Christmas. Did you ever play a District 9 board game? No, but it's on the list of things to get played. It's not Victoria Day in the UK. Okay, so just Canada. I've seen Tom have good interaction with Stefan Fell, despite the bad reviews, although Fell did steal Tom's hat. He did take my hat. He looks good in it. No, well, I mean, I've also said a lot of good things about his games, too. But, yeah, that might be true. Hey, Lucas became a member. Thank you, Lucas. We appreciate that. What are you having or had for lunch today? I think I'm not having anything for lunch today. And I'm currently thinking about what I'm going to do for dinner. Because my wife's out of town, it is now my job to provide dinner for the family. So I am thinking about that, actually. I've been thinking about that for a while now. I haven't decided yet. But I still have uh, four hours. How impressed are you with Z and Mike's extensive knowledge on games, their history, designers, etc.? The three of you and maybe Lincoln from BGG are at top of the heap, in my opinion. Well, I mean... Uh, I think everyone here at the Dice Tower, just by us being around each other, by osmosis, we're all getting good at, at learning games. I mean, if it came down to a trivia contest, I don't know who would win. I would, I would uh, put money on myself, maybe, but I don't know. You know, because, again, we all talk about games and there are things I don't know. And as obvious from our game show last Thursday, I don't know nothing about games sometimes. Um, but there are plenty of people who know a lot about the hobby. There are lots of different people out there. Do you see the conflict between companies like EG new products being Kickstarter only, yet buyers, certainly in my area, only backing at $1 to wait? See on shipping causing issues in the hobby. I, I think that we're going to see the pledge manager eventually being closed unless you back it during the Kickstarter. That's going to be a thing in the future, I bet. Because 
as it is right now, why would you not back a dollar on most Kickstarters? Because you'll just wait to the pledge manager to uh, figure out exactly what you want. Long shot, but would you consider doing a tour in Australia? Sure, but the biggest problem there is money. What do you think of Batman and Gotham City Chronicles? I think season three is going to kickstart this week. Looks fun, but I'm still figuring out what I like. Only a year in a hobby. Before you back that, go read every single, go look at the reviews, and especially look at what people said about the rule book. All right? This game was recently pulled from the Dice Tower Library because nobody played it. Nobody. People got out and looked at it because, hey, it's Batman stuff, but... Loopy says, so far, not a game I know is worse than Vicious Fishes. Fantastic. I will now ban you. <laughs> Nick says, Tom's game is almost as good as just rolling dice. All right. Well, the ban hammer will be used a lot today. What Marvel and DC characters way overrated? Well, for Marvel, it's clearly Wolverine. Look, I like Wolverine as much as the next person, but seriously, he's on every Marvel team. It's just, you know, it's a Wolverine show sometimes. So, the, for Marvel, it's Wolverine. For DC, I mean, the easy answer is Batman, but, I mean, Batman is kind of cool. I'll, I'll, I'll give a, a, a character I think that people like, and I don't particularly like this character a lot, and but maybe Lobo. I think Lobo is overrated. Um, this, he's basically a invincible Wolverine. Um... Um, I don't know. I just don't like Lobo. When can we expect to be trailed? House on the Hill, third edition. That will be coming out later this week. Yeah, I know Clue's a good movie, but it's the only good board game movie. Uh, I get it. Thanks for the answer. I don't want to play along with other people. I want to play along with my Dice Tower gang. Sure, sure. Maybe that will happen, right? I'm not saying it won't happen. I just don't have it in the plans right now. I've never been to a Dice Tower event on, or a cruise. Do you recommend starting with the cruise or just a convention? Oh, my word. Ah... Yeah, I would start with the cruise, man, but it's going to be amazing. I'll tell you what's good about the cruise. Well, I don't have time for that, but uh, some of the things that are good about the cruise. First of all, once you buy a cruise ticket, once you get on that cruise ship, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't sit there and think, what am I eating? Just eat whatever. You don't have to think about what's the schedule. Just do whatever. And there's games that stop us on the island. You're like, what should I do on the island? Just get off and do whatever. Who cares? Just go with the flow. Go with the flow. Go with the flow. It's a lot of fun, and you'll really enjoy it. Um, it might spoil you for everything else, honestly, but that's a good way to get in the, into the thing. But other events are great, too, although Dice Tower East and Dice Tower Retreat are both sold out right now, so the first event you could go to would be Dice Tower West, and the tickets for that aren't on sale. But that's still a great event to go for. I want to say Dice Tower West tickets will go on sale August or September, somewhere around there. The Retreat tickets are on sale right now. Wasn't Queen's Gambit a good show based on a board game? Well, it's about people playing chess. But, I mean, there's been many movies about people playing chess. I mean, that's always possible. What is your opinion on setting turn time limits for games? My group prefers 50 seconds to avoid people who have analysis paralysis. I like the concept, and I'm okay with it, except I found that when you do that, you really irritate those people who take a long time to the point where it flusters them even more. I, it seems like it makes things worse. All right, Tom, when do you think that the industry will get back to normal, if ever? I don't know. Like a few years ago. How will the industry evolve after the crisis we're going through in a while? I'm not sure that the board game industry has ever been normal. It's always been changing. 
Everything was chugging along in 1992 until 1993 Magic the Gathering came out and changed the hobby forever. Kickstarter came by, disrupted the hobby completely. The internet came and disrupted the hobby, very much so. All these things changed dramatically, and so more things are going to do it. Nick says, how do you mask the hot dog taste? First of all, Nick, what kind of hot dogs are you eating? Are you eating the garbage hot dogs? A quality hot dog is amazing taste. The Pudgy Ninja, I like that name, uh, says, I found that my success rate with Kickstarters has gone up dramatically now that I only back games I've already played, either a previous edition or on Tabletop Simulator. There you go. What's your gameplay of games younger than one year old, just released versus games released a year ago? Uh oh, I don't know, like 80% or something? I play older games. I do it often. Um, but I like to play new games, too. I like to play new games more. Horde of the Board says, Ketchup is amazing on hot dogs. Tom is wrong. Once again, I gotta wield this ban hammer. Now, look, if you like ketchup on hot dogs, that's fine. But I do not. Um, so I, I will be wrong there. And if I ever had hot dogs at my house and you put ketchup on a hot dog, I'm fine with that. That's something I find weird, right? I've, I've never understood that. Where I don't like ketchup on hot dogs. I think it's an abomination, right? Like I said, just it's kind of a joke. But I, w I wouldn't want ketchup on a hot dog. But if someone else does, why does that bother me? I've always found that to be odd. Like, I've heard of steak houses that if you put steak sauce on the steak, they get offended and they'll take the steak back. What do they care? You bought the steak. If you like it with steak sauce, why is that a problem to someone else? You know, when I see, so, if I see someone eat McDonald's and I'm like, come on now. Let them enjoy it, I suppose. I mean, you, maybe you might make an argument about, you know, health care. I, I would not. Um, but... You know, you, you could argue that sort of thing, but if someone eats something you don't like, then that's great because that means the food you do like, there's more of it left for you. Hooray! All right, where are we at? How big is the Dice Tower? Uh, is there a tour video anywhere? I think we did a tour of the studio, didn't we? I thought we did. We're not going to show you everything about the studio, mostly because we found people take things, measure them, try to figure out the address of the studio. It's, it's a little odd what some people have done. Some people collect business cards. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. I get that. I, I just have drawers of them that I finally was like, all right, I need to go through these and get rid of them. I would just sit there and write down the addresses, make a document of the people but I would just have so many business cards. And then I was like, who is this person? It's also good sometimes to, to write it down. A, a good thing, again, when you take a business card, take a picture of the card, then also take a picture of that person so you can match the person with the card. Ever thought of getting a customized van with a Dice Tower logo and characters on it? With a board game theme on the inside. You know, I've thought about getting my car with a custom wrap of the Dice Tower. And you know what stopped me from doing it? The evil demons of humanity called the HOA. Because many HOAs, and I'm pretty sure mine is included, do not allow cars in the driveway with logos on them like that. Um, I mean, I guess, like if you have a company logo, you're not allowed to park that in your driveway because that lowers property values when I drive by and see Joe's plumbing on someone's van. Property values, property values. Don't get me started on HOAs. Blake says, I'm not a big condiment person. I eat most things plain. Well, I'll be careful on that. I am the opposite. I love condiments. I have an entire cabinet of hot sauces. I have spices and barbecue sauces and vinegars and mm, all kinds of cool stuff. Is there a member of the Dice Tower team who tends to be the rules, learner, teacher for new games, or do you all tend to do your fair share of that? I think it's kind of a tie in many regards, but if I'm in the game, I... I like to teach it. I, I don't know. It, 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 that's a me problem. But it's often me.
What if the business card is also a promo card for a game? I don't know that I like that combo very much. Over the years, who have you played the most games with? Our guesses were either Sam or Melly. Well, it's definitely not Sam. Who have I played the most games with in my life? It still might be the kids in my neighborhood gang when I was a kid because, I mean, we just played and played and played and played. But let's take out that childhood out of the mix. Um, I played a lot of games with Melody. I played a lot of games with Ruby. Um, played a lot of games with Jason and the guys here in the studio. I don't know that there's a single person I played the most games with. Do you have a favorite pool building plus grid battling game similar to Ascension Tactics? So you're reviewing one of any games that might scratch it itch. I don't know. I don't think so. That's why I like Ascension Tactics. I really like Ascension Tactics. I think it's fantastic. How do you feel about the current events in Marvel Comics? You know, I, I, I'm not up to date on those. I decided I was going to stop reading until they were all done, and then I'll read the whole series uh, in a row. So that's kind of what I've done. I paused. I've been reading Deceased, which is like a, D, a DC mar, uh, zombie type thing. So that's, that's what I've been reading lately. You should play Cosmic with more than three players. I will flat out refuse to play with only three. Are manatees fun to be around? Barbara, manatee, you are the one for me. I have not seen a, a manatee in the wild, I think. I might have. They might be in the canals here. I don't know. I've seen lots of manatees at SeaWorld. That's, they're cool, I guess. They're my daughter's favorite animal, but I don't know if they're fun to be around or not. If you had to choose between going to a convention or doing a live stream event collaboration with another streamer, which would you do? I'd like to be clear how not even close this is. It's going to a convention. Like, not that I, I mean, live streaming is fine. I enjoy live streaming. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing it right here. But, oh, my word, I love going to conventions. Look, the, the internet, look, right now I'm talking to you all. All 276 of you. Fantastic. This is great. Some of you are talking back to me in the comments. I appreciate that. But it's not the same as face-to-face. Face-to-face is fantastic. And that's what conventions let me do. I'd love to see a top 10 games I love but suck at. Well, we've actually done that list already. I forget what it was called, though. But we did it with Dave Luza, I believe. Yes, so I'm going to ask this earlier, but we will be doing a statistical analysis of the eight top 100s. Chris just showed it to us this morning. He's put it all together. It will probably be up next week sometime. Why well, becoming a prairie con in Brandon, Manitoba, Canada? No, but thanks. If I could wave a magic wand and change three things about the board game industry, what would the things I would change? I would change the fixation on the future. I already mentioned that. Again, I have no problem looking forward to games that are coming out. I just find that that's all we talk about anymore. Um, it's everything is about the future. I would uh, get the internet. I would get the board game industry to stop worrying about things that aren't board game related. There's a lot of that going on, which I do not agree with. Um, and uh, what else would I change? Um, I would cause some standard box sizes that you must do or your board game company burns to the ground. All right? We'll make seven different boxes. Your game must fit in one of those boxes. If it doesn't, redesign it. Redesign it or get out of the industry. And if you make a box size that's one millimeter larger than other box sizes just because you think that's funny, you're, you lose that much extra percentage on every game you make. I would make that a law punishable by, not death, because that's kind of harsh, but by dismemberment. 
Um, man, a ticket to ride size box. A fat ticket to ride size box. I would allow that for the bigger games. A Carcassonne size box, a smaller car size box, and maybe a big giant size box for the bigger games. But they would all be uniform. This is the platform when I run for board game president that I'm gonna stand on, and I know y'all will vote for me. Board game box uniformity, you'll all be there. And also, write good rules. Okay. Today is rant day, apparently. All right. Let's see here. Did you put careers in the library? Well, no, but even if I was gonna put careers in the library, I definitely wasn't putting that copy, and that copy was beat all up. What date is the Dice Tower Awards? They're during the Summer Spectacular. Um, I don't know the exact date for when the Dice Tower Awards are, but they're gonna be in that time frame. So when you're at work and mom's away, who's running the show at the Vassal Family Compound? Oh, that's none of your business. You'll find out when you come in and we get you with our security systems. Your most iconic hat is your red one. Yeah, that's probably true. Where'd you get that hat? From a hat store, I think. What combination X-Men would you want to try first when X-Men United Pledge comes in? I don't know, but Iceman will be one of them. <laughs> How do you feel about more IPs joining Smash Up's parody style of rosters? I don't know what that means, but meh. Are Camilla and Wendy actually related? No. What Marvel and DC characters way underrated? Oh, that's a very different thing. I don't know enough about DC to uh, answer that question. Sorry. Um, an underrated Marvel character? Nova. I think Nova's underrated. I think um, wow, there's a lot of cool characters that don't get enough screen time. I think Random is underrated. I've always liked Random. I wish they brought him out more. What do avid board gamers, especially you, I don't think it's especially you, okay, dislike about the roll and move mechanism? And the reason most people hate that is because there's literally no, you know, you just roll a die and see what happens. Just random. That's why people don't like it. Especially most roll and move games, you have spots, you land them, and it says lose a turn. Woo! I would not survive in Florida. I barely survived Vegas in August. You would survive anywhere. You'd be fine. Is it worth going to one of our events solo? Sure, although I would always ask online and be like, hey, is there someone that you could room with? You save costs that way. But yeah, what, what you do is you go and you find some people, you join a game, and then when you, and if you, it's kind of a taste testing thing. You go and you play a game. It's like, hey, players want it. So you go sit down and play games with those people. You're like, man, these people are really fun to play with. Would you like to play again? Hey, you want to do dinner together? Now, I'm not saying that you then become the with those people, then join some other people, jump around. I realize that not everyone is that extroverted to do that sort of thing. But here's the good news. At a convention, I'm there. I promise you, you come up to me and say, I'm having a hard time getting in a game. I will get you into a game. I'll do everything for you. I will go to people and say, this person will join you. Why not? Have a good time. Meet people. I'll help you out. I promise. Let's see here. People are still talking about sauce on uh, ketchup. Uh, order a well-done steak at a steakhouse and watch the napkins fly. Yeah, I've always wondered about that, too. If you want your steak well done, what, what do they care? But well, that's not how you eat it. It's not as good. Sure, but if the person enjoys it, I don't get mad at my kids for liking garbage macaroni and cheese. That's what they like. Would you eat barbecue sauce with a hot dog? Ah, eh, sometimes. Um, 
But for me, my favorite kind of way to eat a hot dog is Chicago style. I also really like kraut dogs and chili dogs. Those are my favorite. But we have, I don't know how widespread this is, but down here in South Florida, there are certain hot dog stands you can go to. And they, they, like, uh, I think it's a Cuban thing, but I'm not 100% sure. But you can get, I don't even know what they are. I just point to a picture and say, I want that on the hot dog. And there's all kinds of cool condiments they put on a hot dog. So I really like those kind of things. The next time I go to one of those places, I'll take a picture. Um, and I'll try to remember it. And so if we do something live, you can ask me and I'll, I'll post it and show it. The picture of what the menu looks like there. And that's all people are talking about now. The world's strongest man competition is going on here in town this week. What game from the Dice Tower Library would you use? Pitch car. Pitch car for sure. Do you miss living abroad? It was very, very fun. <gasps> oh, well, folks, unfortunately, I just realized my time is up. So... I guess we got to end here. I'm just quickly looking at the end. Um, alrighty. Well, I think I got the, the, most of the questions. I know I missed some of them, but hey, we'll be back. Uh, Dice Tower East is sold out. Am I out of luck this year? Is a way to get a shot at convention badge, says Steve. You can get on a, um, a, a wait list, but the wait list is fairly long at this point in time. But you can get on the wait list, you never know. Um, so there's always that possibility. This cruise will be my first cruise, first convention. Oh, yeah, you're going to have a fantastic time. I hope you enjoy it. Alrighty. Well, like I said, more questions are showing up, but I will get to those in the future. Um, We'll be back next week with another Q&A. This is the last live thing for today, but we'll be back tomorrow morning with a live playthrough. Then shoot some marbles tomorrow. Woo! Lots of live stuff coming your way. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching live Q&A on the Dice Star. All righty. Well, now the intro has been played. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual dice stacking contest. How high can we stack dice? Let's see. One. Currently, world record. By world record, we're talking about dice tower stacking contest. Two. Three. This is a one-handed. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Nine. Ah. All right, ten. All right, let's try it again. One. Now I'm going to use two hands. Three. Four. Does anyone else want to five, six, get in on this? Seven, eight. Nine, ten. Ten was my limit last time. I don't feel like I. Come on now. Oh, I got the ten. Eleven. Oh. I don't think you're allowed to like. I'm pretty sure it's against the organization's rules to use your hands. No, no, no. You can use it. You just have to let go and make it stand. All right, you, you go. You show off. Eleven. I'm currently at 11. That's the Nine. 
Yeah, well, you know what? Everyone is on an equal playing playing at ground. Equal playing mat. Eleven. Woo! I need one more. Oh, this is this is it. World record time. 13. Testing some camera footage or something. We take the same thing All right, all right. A single stack of a single die, you cheater. That's 30. What is that? It's called a bludger. That's just a marble. Why is there a marble in the mix? All right. Oh. All right, let's go back to my first methodology. Your first methodology is is no good. Wait. Look, I'm already at like 1,200 marbles. I mean... Marbles? Whatever. Mm.